Because of the unexpected emergency, our speaker can't arrive uh, on site, but we have the recording. So this session will talk about universal acceptance, the standard to an open, inclusive, and compatible internet. And please welcome Arns Goodbranson, uh, Good and let's start the video. So good morning from me, or good afternoon to you. Um, let me share my screen. So I'm Arndt. I'm an open source person at ICANN. I was uh, hired to work with um, some open source software, some other software. A lot of talking in order to make uh, email services and other software support universal acceptance. Universal acceptance. Once upon a time when uh, the world was young, we had a couple of uh, top level domains and uh, 40,000 subdomains. That's no longer the case. We've added domains all the time and we have extended the set of characters that can be used in domains and in email addresses. The big round for that happened in 2012 when we added support for CJKV and many other character sets in the DNS and somewhat earlier in email. Actually, earlier in email. This matters. It matters more in some places than in others. The Americans uh, have no problem with the um, using just ASCII. People in my country, Norway, can make do, but we do have characters that uh, don't uh, map well to ASCII. And in countries, uh, in, the, in the Arabic countries, in India, Perhaps also in the Far East, there's a problem. There are people who can read and write, but are not familiar with A to Z, not really anyway. You can see this very well in India, where the same word can be spelled differently in two instances on a single advertising poster. So you see, um, you see a film poster, and the headline of the film spells the film's name in one way, and then further down, the name of the film is spelled in another way. It works for advertising, I suppose. But it's not good for the DNS. The DNS really needs to spell things in one way. Email addresses really need to spell things in one way. Um, you're seeing that I'm uh, diver digressing from the script here. That's okay. Uh, we want to create business opportunities. That's fine. But the thing that I really want, and being open source people, you probably, is to help people communicate and to give ourselves some well-paid work. So. Universal acceptance has, in a sense, five components. Input, it needs to be possible to enter any email address into any software, not necessarily for anyone. Um, I cannot type kanji, you can not type an ed. The so but the same software should be able to accept both of them. It's just the keyboard that's different. Software should accept both. 
the next step to validate a lot of software knows what a domain is and it should know that in the right way it should not uh, assume that domains can be owned the a to z zero to nine hyphen and dot uh, a lot of domains process uh, email addresses and domains they should that software should also uh, handle all of them storage is simple these days unicode has solved that problem almost entirely uh, there are bugs of course there are always bugs finally display which can be a challenge uh, again bigger in some parts of the world than in others um, mostly it works some countries such as sri lanka have special problems there uh, a lot of software can't display the word free so the domain names that we had and uh, various extensions you see we have new shortish domains that uh, fit well into all the old software example.sky uh, we have new longer top level domains that may surprise some people uh, there's a dot engineering top level domain these days abu dhabi is not the longest and we have internationalized domain names the same for email addresses with one extra thing the Arabic example that you see at the bottom is right to left. Um, you see there's a dot in the domain. There's not a dot in the mailbox name. Email addresses are always written in the same way that they are spoken but the display may be different. There is some support already for this. Uh, it's better than this graph makes it look. 20% uh, support is really unrealistically low. What you're seeing here is that a lot of IP addresses host mail servers that haven't been used in years. If you count by people instead, then um, somewhere between 60 and 80% of people have EAI support. That is to some degree because Gmail and Outlook have EAI support. So that's two IP addresses, vanishingly a um, small number, but more than half of the users. All of the mail open source SMTP servers have EAI support today. Many of you will know how to fake email, I suppose. So none of this will be new. The envelope is the name of the commands you type uh, in SMTP. It determines who receives an email message. The message header is that which is displayed when you receive an email before you open it to read it. And then there's the body, which is what you read, the content, the payload. The header contains a mixture of uh, freeform things, chiefly the subject, and structured, the addresses, and other data. The email system is divided into um, user agents which have user interfaces. 
the submission server which accepts email from the user and uh, makes it be moved somewhere towards the recipients and the transfer agents which may be spam filters and other things almost anything that um, receives email from an msa or another mda and eventually sends it to the mda where it is finally delivered all of these have to handle eai in order to realize universal acceptance if even one does not then it's not going to work this surprises many people uh, we tried to do it in another way uh, one that seemed more robust uh, we learned that it was just more work uh, more complicated debugging so what we need to have is utf8 support for the mailbox name and for the domain name the domain name can be handled using punicode the xn domains that you may have seen the mailbox name just has to be unicode everything else is not eai you can use unicodes in the subjects you can use uh, unicode in the bodies that has nothing to do with the ai AI is just about the addresses everything else we already had gmail as an example of somebody who has good support does not support having kanji in gmail addresses it does support sending email to and receiving email from kanji domains but you can't host them at google and that's a an important distinction outlook google my own uh, email site many sites can receive email from a kanji domain but is not a kanji domain itself in order for EAI to succeed, we need everyone to have level one support. Level two support is software actually supports being a kanji domain. So how do we get there? Oh, this is boring. You may know about um, uh, Unicode normalization. If not, I'll skip it. We, you probably don't know about uh, U labels and A labels. Example, the example. The first thing is a U label, a Unicode label. The accent over the A is there in the human readable way. In the DNS, we have to use an encoding, the XN hyphen hyphen example XTA encoding that you see at the end. That's called an A label. Um, being an open source conference, um, I suppose I might explain what that is. Uh, XN is the prefix to mark that this can be decoded. Then follow the ascii letters and the last blob is a base 36 number it says uh, pretty much insert this unicode code point at position three when you see an uh, when you see an all arabic domain for example it will usually have three hyphens and then a lot of base 36 numbers case folding is completely unimportant to you 
there are some other things like case folding. Oh, you have half with Kanji, right? There are two protocol versions for dealing with that kind of thing. When in doubt, you should use IDNA 2008 or something called UTS 46, which is much the same, and avoid IDNA 2003. You generally will not get the question, so almost forget it. Uh, my script here says to don't use software that has a static list of top level domains. The list of top level domains actually does change often. Um, the dot Maserati top level domain was uh, withdrawn this week. Um, but there are code and libraries that are updated reasonably often using things like Mozilla's public suffix list is okay. It also says do not use regexes. Well, it were regexes work tolerably, perhaps. The email server, you've all done this, I suppose. Who has not uh, faked email? Email protocol changes. During the experiment that preceded uh, the current standard, uh, we tried to make everything compatible. That broke. It became very difficult to find out where problems was. So the actual standards use a simple signaling flag to say, this server supports EAI or this message transmission requires EAI. If you want to transmit a message and the service don't support it, that message is going to be bounced back to the sender. POP and IMAP have been extended to support EAI, also with a signaling flag, but in that case, the signaling flag is a little bit optional. It's also possible to read mail from a POP or IMAP server without support through downgrading. I'll show an SMTP example. A server connects, the receiver says, well, 220, uh, all is well. The receiver says it supports SMTP UTF-8. This is new. And here comes a willful syntax problem. The sender says mail from kanji email address and the SMTP UTF-8 flag. In this case, uh, the receiver says um, 250 accepted. If the receiving server did not have SMTP UTF-8 support, then it would report a syntax error and the email would be bounced. Next, um, there is no change. The actual message is sent as before. The subject uh, contains um, kanji that makes no difference. That was supported before, except that you can see here that it contains plain Unicode kanji. There's no MIME encoding. This was forbidden before. It's legal now. I like it better. So the email complete email delivery path contains multiple hops like that. Uh, starting from the tap, you may see me on my phone sending mail to an to a mail submission agent. 
it goes on to one or two or three mail service. Eventually, one of the mail service is a spam filter. And finally, it ends up on a mail user client on someone else's phone. Sometimes um, there are no client apps. There are web apps quite often. Personally, I prefer to use uh, applications, but well, to each his own. It's extremely common that people use several, which raises the bar for us, because if someone has universal acceptance on their phone, but not on their laptop, there will be frustration. This causes some problems, of course. The sender doesn't know what, he, what a recipient supports. The uh, recipient also often doesn't know what's supported because, for example, there may be an outsourced uh, spam filter and who knows what the outsourcing supports. Features are discovered only locally between two servers along that chain. Everything has to be updated. Happily, almost everything has been updated. But there's still a lot to do. Because uh, even though um, Postfix was updated many years ago, uh, Qmail, Sendmail, Exim, all of the big open source servers were supported years ago. Even though the big uh, free mail uh, servers have been supported, even though Amavis has been upgraded. When 10 things have to work along the chain and it only takes one to break it, then having 70% support or 80 or 90 isn't really all that good. We need to be above 90%. Difficult. The um, architecture we've chosen is simple to debug, but things really have to work. We don't have much in the way of fallbacks. So senders uh, do get uh, bounces uh, a fair bit. This isn't as serious as it as it sounds, I suppose, because this concerns mostly people who couldn't send email in another way. Uh, if you can't write A to Z, you can only write Bangla then being able to send Bangla to some people is better than not being able to send Bangla to anyone, even if some other people could have sent email there. Some things that need to be mentioned. In ASCII, uh, people expect uppercase to be equal to lowercase. People speak their email addresses on the phone. They expect them to arrive to be typed uh, equivalently. A lot of software does not implement case folding or does not do it correctly. This is the notable problem. It needs testing. It's not a really big problem. You'll want to know what actually supports it. Here comes a table. It's at least a year old by now. Uh, important thing is that um, it is possible to put together a complete chain. Um, in the open source world, the combination Postfix, Courier, Thunderbird, will work, for example. Thunderbird works better than you see in this table. 
the extremely well-known Dovecot server has none here. Uh, I have contributed um, a patch that improves that somewhat and we'll do some more work on that. Apart from that, I don't know any changes. Oh, um, exchange has been improved, uh, who cares? Now that we can have mailbox names that are well outside ASCII, we need to think about what names can we have. The document UASG28 uh, uh, contains some considerations. I'll sum it up. Stick to one script. Don't make it too long. And um, don't use punctuation from another script. I have seen examples of people mixing Latin hyphens with kanji. I'd rather not do that. Uh, sticking to one script is really important. Uh, I can has a tool that can be used to validate um, local names for sanity. It's it doesn't catch anything worth speaking of to my in my experience. Uh, if you try to use, uh, for example, runes, I have a runic domain, it will say that's bad, but you knew that already. Anyone who uses uh, an um, EAI address should perhaps consider using an ASCII alias. It may not be practical, but if it's practical, it can simplify things. Oh, avoid using underscore, you knew that. Some software doesn't do any normalization of mailbox names at all, which is a good idea in my opinion. Using mailbox names that don't require low that don't require normalization, probably good for bug compatibility. Being open source people, you knew all of these things. Don't, don't make infusible names. Finally, um, the UASG has an EAI checker, which will connect to a mail server and report whether it supports EAI. It's a quick way to test it. If um, it says no, then the problem probably can be solved with a simple upgrade, assuming that you use open source software. In a few cases, it can't. If you're using Plesk or cPanel, then Plesk and cPanel have some restrictions. Uh, but the software they use to implement email just supports it. That's it. I was done in two minutes less than uh, necessary. Thanks for listening.